So look at verse 23. David's life also, not only was he a humble servant, David's life was a ministry to others. A ministry. Even the word ministry uh, speaks of a ministering servant. In the New Testament, ministry is, is a derivative of what a slave, it's the work of a slave, that's what deacons are, deacons minister, deacons are slaves. In, in the New Testament context, they're ministering servants, that's what we're all to be. In fact, Paul the Apostle calls himself Paul the deacon, the ministering slave. David is a servant, he ministered to others, and God uses the ministry of servants for his glory. Verse 23. And so it was whenever the Spirit from God was upon Saul, and, and that wasn't a positive thing, that was uh, a troublesome spirit, that David would take a harp and play it with his hand. And look at this. Then Saul would become refreshed and well, verse 23 says, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. Boy, did David have a ministry in the lives of others. David's love and passion for God warmed the souls of those around him. It, it started back when, when those who saw him in verse 18 described him. And they said, man, this guy is skillful with the harp. This, the Lord is with him. When he does what he does, it warms our souls. And Saul says, I have a cold soul and I need someone to warm my soul. Go get him. And so this spirit energized servant walks in to the presence of this demonized Saul, and that's what Saul was, demonized Saul, and, and David ministered to him in the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you have a ministry? Do you allow God to energize you? Does your passion for God warm the souls of those around you? You know... It's kind of hard to warm the souls of the saints because I'm surrounded by warm hearts. Whenever I think of this, I always think about before I was in full-time vocational ministry. Don't you remember? Some of you still are, are out there in the cold, cruel world. Do you remember what it's like with those heartless, cutthroat, competitive, dishonest at any moment business people that sometimes you have to work with? I remember I used to come home to Bonnie and tell her all my escapades with the, the management when they'd come in from New York to travel with me as a salesman. And how at the end of the day they would stop and, and ask questions. And they'd say, how can you be a salesman and be honest? Because I used to take returns. You know, salespeople always are too busy to take returns of defective stuff or overstock stuff. And I always took the returns. And the, the management says, how can you do that? I said, it always pays off, always pays off. You know, if you're honest, they'll order from you. I just thought, you know, honesty always pays. You can be a ministry to others. Almost everybody I worked with in the old days when I was corporate sales, almost all of them, before long, would accept a Bible or, or would talk, take the track and talk about it. Because spirit-energized ministry warms the hearts even of, of the lost, at least warms them up, and the Spirit of God gives them an opportunity to hear about the Lord. And David spiritual influence could even calm demonized Saul. And remember, Jesus said we're to be salt. That's preserving the decay around us. We are to be light. We're to be beacons of truth pointing at Christ to a lost and dying world. By your kindness and goodness, impress a lost world with Christ's love. Do you remember what the book of Acts says Jesus Christ did? He went around doing good. We impress the world with Christ's goodness and kindness and love. If we allow the Spirit of God to energize us and our passion for Christ, our passion for His love, shed abroad by His Spirit, will be a minister to those around us. Keep going on down to uh, chapter 17 because I'm going to, we're not going to cover David and Goliath uh, tonight. I'm just going to pull out more of these character qualities in 1 Samuel 17 because David also wanted to honor God with his work. Uh, he ministered to others, but also he wanted to honor God with his work. God is glorified by diligent working servants. Uh, so few. There, there are 300,000 churches in America, so that means one out of every thousand Americans are pastors. Okay, So, so a full-time vocational pastor is one in a thousand. But you know what God wants out of the, the 999 others? Right here. To honor God in your work. Look at verse 15 of chapter 17. David occasionally went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep. 
at Bethlehem. You know what David did? He loved his work. I, I like, he didn't just drop that like a hot potato. He didn't just say, boy, I'm the anointed king and now I'm the entertainer for the king. No, 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 no. David was responsible. He kept it his job till it was finished. Can you imagine what a tragedy would have been if David would have had this not finished stuff syndrome that you see so often nowadays? There's so many people who go through life and they're just littered with a whole bunch of unfinished everything. And I'm not just talking about materially, I'm talking about spiritually too. They just say, I'm going to do this and they never do it. I'm going to do this and they never do it. Can you imagine if David was afflicted with that? If he was not hard working and honored God by finishing what he started? Can you imagine if we just had the Lord is my shepherd? How would you like to go through life with only Psalm 23.1a? And miss all the good parts, especially when you get old, dwelling in the house of the Lord forever, that he's going to go with us through the valley. David finished the jobs he was assigned. Think about, next time you're blessed by something he did as he wrote half of the Psalms, think about how much work it was to be obedient to the Lord and to finish what the Lord called him to do. Well, how, how did he honor the Lord with his work? Well... Nothing entrusted to him was too small for him to maintain. He had been entrusted by his father with his father's sheep. So he did it. He maintained that trust. David, by the way, we'll go all the way down to verse 34, because David was willing to sacrifice for just one lamb. By the way, we know how large his flock was by the Hebrew word. There were three sizes of flocks. There were these huge droves that, that could number in the hundreds and thousands. And then there was a good-sized flock, which was 100 to 300. But the word that's used for David's flock was what his brother pointed out. Remember, his brother says, Who have you left with your few sheep? So he had less than 100 by the, the word for that flock. He had a little flock. But you know what? David was concerned with just one little lamb. Look at verse 34. But David said to Saul, here's David getting to testify to this demonized king, Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. He wasn't ashamed of what God entrusted him to do through his dad. He wasn't embarrassed of how lowly that is. When a lion or a bear came, look at verse 34, and took a lamb out of the flock. He says, when, when a lamb, one, got taken, verse 35, I went out after it, the lion or the bear, and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. Did you catch that? David cared for one lamb. You see, God saw he wanted to honor God with his work, that he was concerned. He could have said, man, I got most of them safe, Dad. Only lost a couple. No, I mean, he wouldn't let one get away and get carried off by a bear or a lion. He struck it uh, and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And the end of verse 35, and when it rose against me, I don't know if he hit it with a staff or, or bonked it with a slingshot, I don't know. But when it came to the lion or the bear, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. I was pretty concerned for one sheep. What I think about is a shepherd... As a shepherd, David was willing to risk his own life for one lamb. Why? Because his dad entrusted him with that flock. Because that was his job. He was supposed to do it. That's what he was called to do. It was for his family. That's their livelihood. It was for, it was for David to know that he could follow through and, and do what he was supposed to do. And if he was supposed to do that, and if his dad said, you're supposed to protect those sheep, then he was going to protect those sheep. And he did it. An amazing thought. David had to risk his life for a lamb, for his dad, for his family. He took life seriously and responsibly. By the way, when do great men and women become great men and women? When they're little men and little women and they start taking life responsibly why is that well keep your finger here and listen to Jesus in Matthew 25 because when I read about David I can hear Christ's voice in the background okay Matthew 25 why don't you look at Matthew 25 verse 21 because David had been entrusted with something small. 
He was very faithful. And this is what Jesus says in Matthew 25, 21. This is how Jesus was going to judge whether or not we were a good and faithful servant. This is the way he measures our lives. Matthew 25, 21. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. This is the parable showing who the servant that God will honor, honor, who he is. He's the one that was faithful in little things. Most people just forget the little things. They are looking for the big things. And God says, no, no, it's the little things you're forgetting that I'm measuring your life by. Most of us will rarely be able to do a big thing. We won't be able to translate the Bible into some language like William Carey did, probably most of us. Most of us will not be able to open up the entire land of China to the gospel like Hudson Taylor did. Most of us will not have 5,000 converted cannibals that were totally transformed by the gospel of Christ like C.T. Studd did or raise millions of dollars like George Mueller did and, and actually raise an entire generation in godliness as he brought thousands of young people through his homes and trained them in Bristol, England 150 years ago. Most of us will never do that. But God isn't looking for the big things. He's looking in Matthew 25, 21, who was faithful over a few things? Who got all the grief in the, the, the talent deal? The one that got one and buried it. That's the one that got in trouble. The one that got five only made five. The one that got ten made ten. Big stuff. The one that got one got in trouble because he buried it. Now, there are spiritual implications to that, but just let's go on the surface, okay? And think about this verse, verse 21. Um, it is a continuation of our little choices that makes us great. You will never become something in the future you are not doing right now. Your current habits and character will only enlarge. Are you responsible like David or careless like his brothers? That is something we need to think about. Are you self-absorbed? like Saul was, or are you others oriented like David was? While you're in Matthew, keep going over a couple books to Luke 16:10. Hear Jesus' voice again. Okay, Luke 16 and verse 10, a little bit further to the right. Jesus says, "He, Luke 16:10, who is who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much." And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. What has God entrusted to you? Adults, he's given you a marriage. If you're married, he's given you a job. If you have a job, he's given you a family. If you have a family, are you being faithful in little things? What has he entrusted you to? Young person, what's he entrusted you? You go into school, do you have a room, do you have a little brother or sister, do you have a job? What is it? What little thing is he entrusted you to? Because if you can't be faithful in that little thing, how can he give you bigger things? That's what he's talking about here. He says, how can I give you what is much if you can't be watching over what is little? It's not how big something is. It's whether or not you're responsible. It's whether or not you are a servant. David wanted to honor the Lord with his work, and God is glorified when we're diligent in our work. And he was diligent in what was little, and God honored him.